Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Christ is risen. Today's gospel, which is familiar to us, we see a man, of course, who suffered for many, many years with the same affliction and being unable to walk, waiting and waiting that he might be healed, but had no one to help him. He said, I have no man. Of course, what he was waiting on was a God-man, as Justin Popovich puts it, and that's the only thing that could heal him. Thirty and eight years, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. So as indeed because of this man's sin that he become ill. That may seem curious to us. We know some things, some vices that we have that do of course lead to illness. There's of course gluttony and drunkenness and being slothful. All those things can damage our bodies. But we don't think about the fact that many of the other passions too lead to our afflictions. It was Adam's, of course, partaking of the forbidden fruit that led to all of our illnesses, that led to death, that led to cancer, that led to heart disease, that led to everything. None of that existed in paradise. But each of our transgressions, of course, does in some way lead to illness, in one way or another. So we have to be careful, as he said, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon us. In the lives of the saints, one of the saints, Arithas, of the Kiev Caves, was in the 12th century from the town of Polotsk, and he was not the best monk. He lived in the caves for a while, and he had in his cell collected quite a treasure, a lot of riches. And he was very miserly about what he had, did not give it to anyone, wouldn't dare give it to anyone. And even though the other monks constantly would encourage him to try to give this away, remember his monastic calling, he, of course, would blaspheme and scream at them and refuse to do so. Well, as events turned out, he became gravely ill and was on his deathbed. God allows these things for our salvation. This was definitely because of his vice that he had become so grievously ill. He goes into a state which is the border of death in this case. It wasn't after death and coming back. And while after having this horrible experience, he wakes up screaming out, O oh Lord, forgive me. O oh Lord, have mercy. O oh Lord, I have sinned. It is thine. I do not regret that it was stolen. What had happened that led up to this event, to his grievous illness, was robbers came one night and took all of his goods. And instead of learning a lesson from that and becoming non-acquisitive, and learning to be humble, he began to blaspheme God. He began to lash out at the brother monks, I mean, viciously, all the time. Despite the fact that they would encourage him to take this as a, as a message, to be humble, to give up those goods, you don't need those goods. So when he came out in this state yelling those things, the monks asked him, Arithas, what did you see? He said, I was in a trial. The demons on one side were vying for my soul, yelling, no, he is ours, because he never gave away anything. He only kept the money and he blasphemed God. In this case, the angels, in some cases they do have good works to offer, did not. His guardian angels looked at him and said, why? Why could you have not just accepted it like Job? That everything was taken from you. And then like Job, and all for your afflictions is alms before God, and you would have accepted them, even though they were involuntary, as your repentance. At that moment, the Lord allowed Arithas to wake up out of this state, and that is when he yelled, O Lord, have mercy, O Lord, forgive me, O Lord, I have sinned. It is thine, meaning the money, and do not regret that it was stolen. And then he began to take the opportunity for repentance. He did not lead this, let this moment lead to his ruination, but to his salvation. And he began to give away everything that he had. He began to praise God. He began to act as Job and saying, The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He learned that lesson. What a blessing it was for Arethas to have that moment 
of the near-death experience to have his goods stolen and was allowed by God that he might fall ill because he came, became very sick because of his fretting over his loss of his money. And then he became a saint. He died not long after that. It was one of the incorrupt saints of the Kiev Caves. It's a great lesson for us. Because things will be taken for, from us in this life. We will have illnesses and afflictions in this life. There's no if, ands, or buts. We will. We will become sick. I have literally in my life seen and witnessed people whose whole demeanor change, not just their actions and behaviors, but their faces because of things they were falling into in their life. I remember one time an individual fell into something really terrible, and later on I showed a picture of this person to a priest that had known him, and he said, I do not recognize that person anymore. That can't be that person. It was, because sin does in fact change us, and not for the better. For the worse, it doesn't bring forth the radiant light of Christ. And this man today, we don't have any evidence of him complaining. We don't have any evidence of him bemoaning the fact that he can't get there. He very calmly tells the Lord, I have no man to put me in there, but I've been waiting here 38 years. Imagine that. We complain when there's a day of suffering and affliction. We complain when there's a week. It's less than 38 years that the Lord came and brought about his healing, not by the sheep's pool, which he could have. It was a, really an image of baptism. The Lord heals him with his own word. And the man, despite his years of affliction, 38 years of muscles being atrophied, stands up and walks and carries things. The Lord tells him, sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. He was given a great blessing, another opportunity. And this affliction worked out to his salvation. Now all of us have afflictions. And it's what we do with them. Some of our afflictions are for gaining crowds in heaven. Some of our afflictions are for bringing us closer to God and proving our love for Him. Some of our afflictions are because of our sins. Some of our afflictions are because there are bad people around us, and the Lord gives us an opportunity to witness to the gospel through that. Various reasons we have our afflictions. But whatever they are, the Lord tells us to say, Thank you. Thanks be to God. In the life of the new martyr Vasily of Optina, when he, a woman comes to him for confession, she's having all this terrible time, and he says, Well, and thanks be to God, and glory to God. What do you mean? Glory to God. Glory to God for all things. That's all he would say to her. But it was true. And it changed her life. And she accepted that way of thought. Now if we don't have affliction in this life, we should be concerned. The Father's rather clear that grace has been removed when there's no troubles in this life. Because our troubles will come from somewhere else, on the other side of the grave. And that's not what we want. It's better to have our afflictions now when we are for passing a fleeting time. Any of our afflictions now do have an end, but they only end if we give thanks to God. They only end if we use them for our salvation and not our ruination. They only end when we have afflictions if we are willing to say humbly, Lord, forgive me, Lord, have mercy, Lord, I have sinned. I do not regret what is being done to me because these things can work out for our salvation eternally and to the glory of God. All of these things can, all of our afflictions, all of our difficulties can lead us to the kingdom of heaven if we follow that example of Elithas and repent as Job and take whatever afflictions have been given to us to God's glory. And how often I have heard People say, I don't know why I'm suffering. I'm a good person. I don't know why I'm, this bad thing's happening. I don't know why I'm sick. It is almost as if we say these things as if we're perfect. And we've never done anything in our lives wrong. The humility is lacking. Because each and every one of us, I, first of all, have done things that merit illness, that merit affliction, that merit derision. If we take those things and change with them, they can transfigure us, transform us, 
Make us as that paralytic. Make us take up our beds and walk. And make us follow Christ from the decay of heaven. Amen.